Hi everyone, this past weekend was the opening weekend for Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando. This is always my favorite theme park special event of the year, something I make sure to go to not only once, but probably multiple times each season, and this year was a really good event. Gonna start off by talking about my thoughts on all of the different haunted houses, the scare zones, and more. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I rank all 10 of the Halloween Horror Nights haunted houses. So let's start off with the heart and soul of the event, and that is the haunted houses themselves. The first haunted house I went through was The Exorcist Believer. Now this is based on a new Exorcist movie, so not the old classic horror film. This is a new one that I guess is coming out sometime, uh, I don't know, this fall. Um, it started off with some really great sets, like a big Spanish village, and then you go into the woods. There's a really cool scene with scrims. Now, the second half of this house is not quite as strong, and there is indeed some very gory imagery in this haunted house. I liked it better than the Exorcist house they did on the classic film a few years back. The most anticipated house by many this year is Stranger Things Season 4, and this one, honestly, I thought was just okay. It did have some really cool sets, but it suffered by having a lot of static props, and I don't think there were too many actors in this house either. And man, the most disappointing thing, like, the Vecna costumes, they did not look good at all. It kind of looked like Vecna was wearing a Vecna costume t-shirt that wasn't the right size. Like, it was just a bad look. The sets were definitely the highlights. There were some cool things in there, but yeah, this one felt a little bit disappointing for me. Um, I, I definitely like the first Stranger Things house they did much better than this one for season four. The next haunted house was Blood Moon Dark Offering, which is, a oh man, this is a weird house. It, uh, it kind of seemed like it was angry farmers. Now the scares were a bit repetitive, and this takes the cake for the goriest and most messed up house at all of Halloween Horror Nights this year. I'm a big fan of the giant sets at Halloween Horror Nights. It's something I really think that sets HHN apart from a lot of other theme park haunts are those big giant sets and this house did not disappoint when it came to sets. There's a village in the middle, you walk through a weird evil church, there's a guy up on the second story of a bell tower, and it has a really great ending. Another haunted house I really enjoyed was Yeti Campground Kills. This was a little on the campy side. Essentially, it's exactly what you think it's going to be. A whole bunch of giant Yetis or Sasquatches. Well, they are attacking a campground. There's lots of scares. There's lots of Yetis. And um, there's actually a few animatronics in there. There's a really cool scene with a lake. They've got some very different scares. This one's very repeatable, I found, like, because there was a lot of detail in this haunted house and so many actors. My favorite scene, there was a human who um, uh, I think murders a baby Yeti, and then a full-grown Yeti kills that human. So that was, um, that was pretty neat. For hardcore Universal fans, the most anticipated house was probably Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. Now this was themed after an old ride at Islands of Adventure, the old roller coaster, and as you walk through, you'll notice a lot of sets from that area. You get the Enchanted Oak Tavern, the Dragon's Castle, many of the rooms in the queue. One of the highlights of this haunted house for me was indeed the lighting effects. This was some of the coolest lighting I've seen at Halloween Horror Nights. Say like an evil ice guy was gonna jump out of his boo hole to try and scare you. When he did that, the whole boo hole and the area around it would light up with like this fiber optic white icy glow. It was really, really neat. And then some of the ice and fire guys had like glowing shirts on, which I've never seen them do at Horror Nights either. And I thought that was great. One disappointment for me, I was hoping at a Dueling Dragons house that there would be some really cool Dueling Dragons animatronics or puppets, and unfortunately that doesn't happen. You do get two static figures that blew smoke. Part of the house, since there really isn't that many dragons, it's just like the evil ice guys and evil fire guys, that very much reminded me of the Heat Meister and the Cold Miser from the Year Without of Santa Claus uh, network special. Did really like the ending on this one. The haunt splits into two separate paths, as just like in the ride, you get to choose thy fate of fire and ice. And then in those paths, there's different endings. So making this house a little bit more repeatable. Chucky Ultimate Kill Count is another one of the IP houses. And this is a haunted house, which is kind of like a meta attraction in which Chucky is visiting his own attraction at Universal and then decides to murder everyone. The highlight of this one is actually right as you go in. They have like a fully puppeteered Chucky at the beginning, which was great. But overall, this house, it felt long, but it also felt a bit on the cheap side. Like the, the house was longer than they had budget for. And it was just this was actually one of my least favorite houses at the entire event. Universal Monsters Unmasked is essentially Universal Monsters in Paris, and they feature the Hunchback, 
The Invisible Man, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and The Phantom of the Opera. And I really like this house. This was good stuff, man. Uh, lots of Phantom, and lots of very, very gory Phantom, too. Like, this is definitely not the musical Phantom of the Opera. This is a murderous horror movie Phantom of the Opera. And this had just a beautiful, beautiful giant sets in a lot of places. And I like any haunted house that sort of gives you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And having like the four different monsters in their different settings made it really, really cool. There's a really cool area with the Invisible Man, which is kind of campy and silly, but it actually works really well coming after the very real and very gory Phantom of the Opera. This is a really good house. Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins is a vintage circus or vintage carnival, um, classic magic kind of themed haunted house features Dr. Oddfellow, who's more or less the kind of the icon for this year's version of Halloween Horror Nights, but obviously they're gonna use like Stranger Things and The Last of Us in all the advertising because that's gonna sell way more tickets than a character that nobody's never heard of like Dr. Oddfellow. And this was one of the scariest houses at the event, I feel like. It's in one of the tents, so it's a little bit more close quarters, a little bit more claustrophobic. There are some really great scares. There are some effects in there that rely very heavily on timing. So if you're walking at the right time and you get this, this scare or this wacky event, you're gonna have a really great time in this haunted house. If you're walking through this house and you miss a lot of those things, you might not think this one is as good. Uh, one character looks definitely like Mantar from the old WWF. I, I also, as a big dork, I loved all the retro circus and retro carnival kind of stuff. Really cool haunted house. Big thumbs up to that one. The next house, also in a tent, is The Darkest Deal. And this is something about a musician selling his soul to the devil to be, I guess, a better musician. I don't know. This one didn't really work for me. The house felt a bit jumbled. At one point, there's a really cool demon popping out of a piano. Now, that was that was cool. I thought this was one of the darker houses with lighting-wise, like kind of hard to see your hand in front of your face, kind of hard to walk around. There's a cool demon guy at the end. And I had to think, like, at one point in the house, there is a, a big rocking chair with a fedora on it. And I'm wondering, like, is this a tribute to the late great Bray Wyatt, who just passed away last week? A uh, wrestler I really much enjoyed. But uh, overall, the darkest deal house, well, this is probably one of the weaker haunted houses at the event. Finish things up with the haunted houses. One of the most anticipated one is The Last of Us, and this is based on the PlayStation game or the HBO TV show. And if you haven't seen either one of those, essentially it's plant zombies. There's some really cool masks in this one, a couple of neat two-story sets. It snowed in a bathroom, that's fun. But this one did feel a bit on the repetitive side. Um, I've never played the games. I'm two episodes into the TV show. I've been enjoying that. So by the end of the event, I'll probably finish the TV show and probably get this house a little bit more. But so far, it was okay. There is one show this year at Halloween Horror Nights, and it's for the third year in a row. It is Nightmare Fuel. This one is Nightmare Fuel Revenge Dream. So you're going to have fire dancers in there, dancer dancers in there, aerialists, and more. I haven't gotten to see the show yet. I've heard it's good. I've enjoyed the show in the past two years. But for me, normally with the show, it's kind of like I see it once, and I'm good. There are five different scare zones this year at Halloween Horror Nights, starting off with one right in the front of the park, which is Dr. Onfellow's Collection of Horrors. This has the big, iconic, neon Halloween Horror Nights sign involved in it. There's a bunch of wacky-looking monsters there, and you also can get your picture taken with Dr. Oddfellow, the more or less icon of the event and his big, wacky caravan. Vamp 69, Summer of Blood, it continues the series of vampires that have been throughout the event in different decades. This one's just, they're all at Woodstock. And I don't know, I, I much prefer the scare zones with the big giant costumes instead of, you know, you, you just throw some fangs and a tie-dye shirt on somebody and up, they're a vampire. Shipyard 32 is, um, I guess, evil fish people. It's a very small scare zone that is in San Francisco, essentially in the exit area of what is the Fast and the Furious attraction during the day. Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror is the Central Park scare zone this year. Again, another one with big wacky monsters, so I like that. One thing I liked about this scare zone is there's like evil eyes from the trees looking down on you. I thought it's felt different than some of the other Central Park scare zones they've done in years past. There's not a ton you could do with this zone as it's kind of smaller, but I did think they did a pretty good job this year. And again, it's got wacky monsters in it, and I like wacky monsters. The final one is Dark Zodiac, and this is in the Hollywood section of the park, more wacky monsters. I guess it's themed to the signs of the Zodiac. I think this scare zone has the best costumes out of any of them. There's a giant scorpion lady at one point, some big stilt walkers, uh, some of the costumes light up. So this one I think was probably my favorite of the scare zones, just for the large amount of wacky costumes in there. There's also a whole bunch of people with chainsaws in this scare zone, and they all wear kind of these weird masks. If you're familiar with WWE, a uh, third WWE reference in this video, very similar to the mask Finn Balor wore to the ring, or the weird like sequindy mask. 
So th those guys, those guys, oh, they just got chainsaws. Gonna finish off the video here with some footage of the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store. Now this is located in the New York section of the park and every year it gets a different theme. This year it's all like kind of walking into a spooky comic book. I actually thought the tribute store was pretty well done. And again, they, they always do a good job with merchandise. This year was no exception. There is so much merchandise for Halloween Horror Nights. So if you like the event, you're probably gonna buy something. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff in there. Now I'm gonna wrap things up by talking about how I would rank the haunted houses. There are 10 different haunted houses, and unless you're buying that Express Pass, it's unlikely that you're gonna see all in one night. This is how I would rank them up. This is how I would prioritize them if you are coming to the event like that. Number 10, Dead Last, is Chucky. Number nine, Stranger Things. Number eight, The Darkest Deal. Number seven, The Last of Us. Number six, Exorcist. Number five, Blood Moon. Number four, Yeti. Number three, Universal Monsters. Number two, Dr. Oddfellow. And my favorite house this year would be Dueling Dragons. And there we go, they're my thoughts on Halloween Horror Nights for 2023. I love this event. Uh, we've got the Frequent Fear Pass with the Express, so Molly and I will be at the event quite a bit over the next two months. Really enjoy heading out over there. If you're going to the event and you see us, come over, say hello. We'll talk all about the event with you. And thank you very much for watching this video.